we had a discussion on the pod yesterday about just NBA discourse right mm-hmm. now. I feel like we're we're at a point right now where a lot of people have platforms, a lot of people have voices. Um is you know, it, specific the social me- the social media era alone is different from what it was before social media. Um and even within the social media era, 2018-2019 NBA discourse is completely different from what it is in 2023. How do you, how do you feel about NBA discourse right now? Do you think it's it's gotten too toxic? It's at a good place? Like I, you know, is, is it not fun? Because I ain't gonna lie, there was a point where shit was just not fun for me, bro. Shit, yeah. I, I didn't want to do. I, I didn't want to be a part of NBA YouTube. I want. I, I made a concerned effort to not talk about NBA on Let's Keep It a Buck. Like I was truly done with NBA mm-hmm. discourse. But right. and maybe it's because the Celtics are good, so I like talking about the Celtics. <laughs> but like, the, it's it's fun for me now. So how how do you feel about NBA discourse in twenty twenty three? Oh, it's in the mud for sure. Like it, it's 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 in the mud. It's like, but the thing about it is, it, that's kind of what we were just talking about. You know, you can choose how to create your feed, and you can choose what you engage with, mm-hmm. and and you can choose things. And so, um, I I think in general it's in the mud because. I guess this conversation kind of pertains to NBA Twitter, or at least partly. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's like a world war for the simplest stuff, you know? And and there's a lot of people out there that are just ready to go at your throat over a Malcolm Brogdon take. If it's <laughs> not, like, you can only cover so yeah. much in the amount of characters you have. Um, I, I, it's, it is extremely toxic. But the thing about it is, is again you can choose what to engage with like mm-hmm. uh, the way i create my feed, it's, i want to know more because still i make videos about it and so it does help me to know some of these smaller things and so i choose to follow the people that are you know breaking down stuff or, or talking about basketball in a way that i want to see it mm-hmm. but you know, it all you can also engage with the other side of it as well where, where it's world war three and where every single thing that happens has to has to devolve into a, a really like you know, you say you do the uh, agenda thing for fun, but some people are really really like serious that. about it. Really yeah. serious. And on a on a surface, like I get it because I was once I, I was at an age where that was a thing when I was mm-hmm. uh, when we were going through the Heatles era. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't really have a Twitter back then, but if we did, I probably would have been one of those, one of those people because I despised <laughs> the like I did not like LeBron James. I didn't like the big three. You know, it's so Kobe I, over I was, LeBron. If I want to win a yeah. championship, I want Kobe Bryant. Yeah, that that was me. <laughs> that was that was me. Bro. I promise. I promise. And so it's like, yeah, I don't get mad about it because at the end of the day, I get it. That's that's you know, I was probably once that, especially on NBA Facebook. That was more that was more popular back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, again, you, you can just you can just kind of choose what you what you're gonna interface with. And you know, if, if that's what you're gonna like you, you were just talking about the you know, you said something about the goat right there. It's I stopped making the last goat video I made was probably in 20 uh 2018 2019 mm-hmm. and it's because like i choose not to have that conversation anymore there was a time where i was like tooth and nail over it but now i realize five years have passed and those exact same conversations are happening mm-hmm. and you're never gonna convince one side and if you believe what you believe that is what it is so it's it's honestly the conversation is a bit of a waste of time to me because people are gonna get angry over it it's gonna turn into like the memes and stuff that show mm-hmm. oh mj did this when scotty pippen was out like it's gonna it's gonna devolve is the thing so i i think i think the discourse generally is in the mud but you can also very much just choose where you're gonna spend your time that that's that's how i put it you know you could yeah. choose what's gonna make you mad if you like all the people that that, that be in lowe's comment sections getting super mad over your stakes it's like you're choosing to get mad over that. Like you got, you got, you do what you saw. You saw the tweet, bro. You, yeah. you know, you know what it is. Like if you choose to interface with that and get mad every single time, then that's 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 just like you can do better, man. Right? You can do better. You, yeah, you can do better. It's funny because you said you stopped doing the goat conversations because it was mm-hmm. pointless. I embrace the goat conversations because it is pointless. I, I, I fuck it, bro. Like <laughs> fuck it, man. Kobe is top three. Yeah, you know what? And it's funny because I will have that conversation. Like that—that's one thing right there. I don't discuss Kobe on Twitter anymore. I don't discuss Mm -hmm. Kobe on Twitter. I don't get into those discourses. But yeah, like as somebody who watched Kobe play, I a thousand percent. I'm of the opinion that man, he he was pretty much in 2013. That was the last time we saw a great Kobe Bryant. And so by the time NBA Twitter came around, he had been old and injured for three years. And just a lot of the conversations I just see, I'm like, bro. 
I, I was I was alive during this time. I remember the, the discourse. I was I was watching this man's career. This was not the discourse during his career. This is not what people thought about him. Like, mm-hmm. You got him behind this guy. What the fuck are you talking about? But I'm not gonna change anybody's mind, bro. Like on a Twitter thread, yeah. I'm not changing anybody's mind about it. So I don't I don't do it. But hey, if you you know, like you said, you embrace the goat debate because it is pointless. Hey, you know, there's other ways to go about it. But for me, it's probably gonna make me mad. So I just yeah. don't do it. It's like, <laughs> now the the Kobe discourse is definitely interesting because and maybe because I I was ten at the time, but I I, I vividly do remember when he won that fifth ring. It was yo, he's top five locked. Bro, I promise. <laughs> yeah, like, am I am I bugging on that? Do you remember those conversations? Yo, he got five, man. Top five locked. The Kobe conversations when we were younger and he was going through his career and he was competing for championships and he was winning championships. Like it, it was pretty much that he was a Jordan clone at that time. Those yeah. are the things that you would hear. Having him out, like people. I don't. Re- I genuinely don't remember hearing a barely top ten comment when his career was actually happening. I don't remember hearing those conversations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just a yeah. No, the the discourse back then when he was playing, just completely different now. Like, it, I think if you grow up completely on the discourse now, you might believe that Kobe was just a really good shooting guard, and yeah. that's it. And it's like, fam, it was a lot more than that. Fam. <laughs> it was it was a lot more than that. But uh, the conversation has has completely flipped on its head in the last like five six years it's uh it's wild to watch so yeah. that's one of the things i don't i don't i don't really get into anymore but yeah <laughs> now, no, that, you're, that, you're that's right. what i'm saying though like back, back then it was yo kobe's locked top five and now i don't I, like i'm not surprised when people put him at 11 or 12 like for real for yeah. I'm, I'm not and i i do i do wonder if the same thing is gonna happen to lebron I don't like think it is. I, I personally don't think it is. But right now, it's like, yo, 1A, 1B, a lot of people got him go. Once he retires, once, you know, everything really settles in, is he going to move down to the 4 or 5 spot? I don't know. I don't think so. But I am yeah. I am curious. I, I, I definitely am curious, though. I think LeBron will be immune to that because he is, you know, kind of – he hasn't fully entered, like, the the jordan aura of conversation because you, mm-hmm. you know people are protecting jordan like 30 years after his his retirement date or his, his chicago pools <laughs> days so mm-hmm. i think it has to age a little bit but still i think with the things that lebron has done and it is especially in our era now everything he does goes viral pretty much so i think he'll pre- be pretty well protected from that with some of the things that we've seen but um not to you know in, in talking about the things you just said about kobe and that conversation mm-hmm. like fam we were we were there's this like take that goes around now that some you'll see people actually take seriously that he was never the best player in the league and it's like hold up there's a legitimate clip of prime lebron james saying oh yeah no it's kobe right now like it's yeah. his shit around that time when he was competing and winning for championships like lebron of all people is giving him that nod and that's what the conversation was around that time but there's you know there'll be a conversation about oh oh seven braun was a better player than kobe and this player was better than kobe and yeah, it's just crazy to me because I'm like, bro, when it was happening, none of those conversations were happening. <laughs> like, not at all. It's a, uh, it, it's a weird thing. But yeah, I think I think LeBron is very well protected from that. I I don't think um, like I don't think he'll fall mm-hmm. reliably out of like the top three, you know, years and years from now from discourse. I I don't I don't believe that he will. And and kind of an extension of that question about NBA discourse. How do you feel about NBA YouTube right now? I feel like the space is definitely much bigger than when mm-hmm. we started. There's channels like I didn't even think like channels like this will ever pop up like Rebound. I I respect mm-hmm. the work that they do, but I never thought like NBA YouTube would be Mister Beastified essentially. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, how, how do you feel about NBA YouTube right now? So admittedly, I'll tell you like you might be surprised. Mm-hmm. I don't know a ton about it because I legitimately go in and watch like all my watch later stuff in YouTube is completely random stuff. Like it's mm-hmm. not really bad because since I make so much basketball content, right. yeah, I still I still interface with it and, and go looking for information. But I I don't go you know searching around NBA YouTube for my relaxed time because when I'm not right, working man. on basketball, like I want to see other stuff. From what I do know of it, it's it's like, hey, man, there's a channel for everything, it seems mm-hmm. like now. And there was a time, I don't know if it's still happening or not, but there was a time like, you know, maybe a two or three years ago where it felt like a new, bigger channel was popping up like all the time because it was a, yeah. it's a pretty accessible space. The thing is, like, people are hungry for NBA content. 
uh, it is an accessible space and you, people can you, you get the right thumbnail and the right title it can set your channel off and get you a, an audience faster than i think you can get in other spaces so mm -hmm. not exactly sure if that's still happening but that is a thing that that was going on but i, I think that it's um again there is a channel for everything there's up to the thinking basketball then there's the channel where you can tell that you know they're not taking it seriously at all, but it's entertaining content. Souls and Saves, um, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's us. That's us. <laughs> that's, that's you? Yeah, yeah. I, that's us, man. We be trolling I'm a lot. I'm not going to lie. A little too much. When I, said that, when I said that, I had like a flight in my head. I don't know if that's still what he does, but that's what, that's yeah, what yeah, I had yeah. in my head. Yeah, there's, um, there's channels for like basketball essays, which I consider that a lot of still what I do. I still like to tell stories on basketball. Um, there, there's literally something that can fill every every range i think of of basketball talk on nba youtube so um it, it, there's a variety hell there's a variety there is a, yeah. a variety and you can choose what you uh what you want to see and there's a lot of great stuff out there too a lot of great in-depth mm -hmm. in-depth stuff and unique stuff so I, I personally love it now because 